the Grandland video blog for books that came out on May 13th, 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. This is the first of our usual three installments. This is going to talk about some Marvel books. Part two will have your DC books, and part three will have your indie books. We've got a lot of Marvel books to talk about, so we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. Seven books. It's an ambitious task for ten minutes. We're going to start with Dark Rain Hawkeye number two of five. Andy Diggle, again, writing a deliciously psychopathic Hawkeye uh, bullseye, I'm sorry, bullseye as Hawkeye from the uh, Dark Avengers, but also uh, moving forward with uh, him just creating this chaos. And finally, uh, presumably, Hawkeye coming after him, the real Hawkeye. But we can't say for sure just yet, but there's bullseye is coming after him. It seems like it would be the actual Hawkeye. That's at least the suggestion to me. Um, Andy Diggle and Tom Rainey deliver on a good, solid second chapter from the first chapter. Nothing really new here, nothing really uh, incredibly groundbreaking, you know. it's He's a psychopath, and he's a fun psychopath to write, obviously, for Andy Diggle, and he's kind of a fun psychopath to read, because it's, like it's kind of like watching some shock film. You're just like, I can't believe he did that. I can't believe it just keeps going. This isn't quite as bad as the first one, but... It's definitely continuing forward. There's there's nothing to really grouse about here, but again, if you're if you're not reading it, you're not missing it. So still a pretty solid book. Deadpool Suicide Kings number two delivers on all fronts. This is a hilarious book, just like number one was. Uh, just as we've come to expect from Deadpool, it seems that Marvel has finally got uh, a stable of writers who are all tackling Deadpool and all know what they're doing when they tackle Deadpool. It's hilarious stuff. The Punisher shows up. There's some tremendously graphic disembowelments. And at first I was kind of taken aback. But I did see that there is parental advisory here. I, I had to actually flip back to the cover to see what the rating was on this book because it is gory. It's not what you'd expect from a non-Max book. But again, as with Deadpool, hilarious. Just absolutely hilarious. And there's kind of a uh, sideways uh, meatloaf joke in there, which I thought was really hilarious as well you know more good stuff anytime you see deadpool on the cover you know you're getting good stuff next up yes i did tackle lockjaw on the pet avengers number one what a brave choice i know lockjaw lockheed speedball's cat hairball uh falcon's bird red wing or red bird i forget which it doesn't really matter uh core four characters that you can expect in this book and then thor frog which has been explained as being um when Thor Frog happened with the classic Walt Simonson Thor, uh, one of the other frogs who was actually formerly a human named Simon Walterson, and he's a little wink and a nod to Walt Simonson, uh, collects, somehow gets imbued with like a shard of Mjolnir and turns into Thor Frog after actual Thor is out of the whole froggy business. And then the surprise sixth member, which, you know, spoilers be damned, I'm going to ruin it for you, it's Miss Lion from the Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends show. It's uh, unabashedly cheesy, but it is all ages. It's kind of fun, kind of funny, you know, and it, it does, like, like good children's material, it does go with a little wink and a nod back to the adults, you know, with the Simon Walterson joke and, and some of the other things that happen. You know, it, it at least acknowledges things, you know, it acknowledges that, that Kitty Pride died in Astonishing X-Men. It, 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 it goes beyond and, and really at least treats this as all as it's actually happening in the Marvel Universe. Even though it is definitely a kid's book, it's just goofy and campy and not bad. I hate to say it. Not, not bad. Not good, but, you know, kind of fun. Kind of fun. Uh, it's surprising how much I didn't hate it. Secret Warriors number four. Number four, yes. Uh, Jonathan Hickman is still delivering just gangbusters here. This is a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a slowdown. We've had three really solid issues with really big endings, and this is kind of like a, it's kind of like a, um, we've got to get from point A to point B, so we got to take an issue to get there. And, uh, and right at the end, it says, you know, look, you've been really patient. Issue five, it's going down right now, you know, and that's really what this is. This is really a setup for issue five. Not that it's a bad book in it, in and of its own right. Caselli, Stefano Caselli is doing a great job with art, and Jonathan Hickman, obviously, and Brian Michael Bendis laying out a great story really fun espionage story if you miss checkmate in the dc universe if you miss greg rucka's work there this is where you need to be because this is espionage of the highest order and of the highest quality speaking of nick fury 
I'm assuming this was only put out for the 70th anniversary, but Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos is a nice little one-shot by Jesse Alexander and Jean-Paul Leon. I've been following Jean-Paul Leon as an artist since um, Milestone. He did some great Milestone stuff early in his career. Jesse Alexander I'm less familiar with, but they do deliver on a World War II story that is a lot of, uh, a lot of fun, fits in the time period, and it's written in the style of a Silver Age book. You know, there are just so many things going on all at once, panel by panel, and it's a huge story. This alone could be could be stretched out to four or five, six issues, but they deliberately didn't. They told it in the 1940s style, and they said, look, you know, we're going to tell it. All this fun stuff is happening. Nick Fury's crazy. You know, all the commandos keep going, wahoo, every time they go somewhere. It's a really nice read, really good stuff if you're into the World War II Sergeant Fury idea. It's really good. I was kind of surprised. I went in with low expectations, and I was blown away. Your eyes do not deceive you. Wolverine number 73 is out. Wolverine 72, uh, a couple weeks from now, maybe. Um, Jason Aaron and Daniel Way have provided two short stories. Jason Aaron's with Adam Kubert and Daniel Way with Tommy Lee Edwards. Uh, Jason Aaron with Adam Kubert is not really a short story. It's kind of a cute little six to eight page. That's all it feels like. It's just there. There's not a lot of content. And then supposedly it's part one of two. But there's nothing to continue. Uh, Wolverine 74 is going to have part two, and it's also going to have part two of the Daniel Way, Tommy Lee Edwards story where Wolverine's part of a biker gang. That seems a little more interesting, but there's no reason these couldn't have just been published as one shots or whatever. You know, obviously they're here just to pad the number to make Wolverine 73 and 74 out of the way before 75 is Dark Wolverine. You know, that's the only reason they're in the Wolverine book. It's not really necessary. In fact, if you've got Wolverine on your pull list and you're waiting for Wolverine 72, surprise, sucker! They got you. Marvel got you, and the comic book store probably got you, too, because you asked for it, and you probably had it in your pull bag. Lastly, this installment, I hope we're doing good on time, X-Factor number 43, and this book continues to be absolutely crazy. We get another mind-blowing ending. We get some more Peter David first-page snark. It's just phenomenal. This is really exciting to see where this is going to go. I really have no idea what's going to happen to Madrox, and obviously I hope he gets back to regular time. He's stuck in the future with adult Layla Miller and the Summer's Rebellion, and meanwhile X-Factor Investigations is tackling all sorts of issues. It's great. It's just really fun characters, and you can see the characterization here. They're not a team so much. They're just a collection of people that work together occasionally, but right now there's just so much stuff going on. They're all in these different plot lines, and they're all building to a head. I'm sure it's going to pay off really well. Peter David does great when it's X-Factor. Never, never read a bad Peter David X-Factor book. So that's it for this installment. I hope I made it through in time. Seven big books from Marvel. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to have some DC books for you. Thanks for watching.